Hi friends, it's Melissa Murrow with Vintage Bee Design, and today I am going to take some of my old windows that I've had stashed for a couple years now. We got these free from some of our flipper clients. I'm going to show you a variety of techniques that you probably haven't seen before, and some you have, but maybe a fresh look on them. The first part of this process is definitely cleaning. So I've got a high speed pressure spout on my hose. You can see there is a lot of dirt. The paint is really beginning to chip off of these windows. These are vintage windows. They came out of a house and again, flippers gave them to us. So they're in really rough condition. Um, you can see it's peeling and chipping. And so when I'm cleaning this, I am going to want to make sure that I pick up all the little loose debris parts because this is very likely lead-based paint. And I have pets and grandkids that I don't want putting this in their mouth. So I will be playing cleanup afterwards, which is not my favorite thing to do. I probably should have sat something in the yard, a tarp or something to catch a lot of this. But honestly, I don't know if that would have made much of a difference. Anyway, I've got to clean all these windows. I have three different windows. I may get to the third one or I may not. Kind of depends on how long this project goes but they all have different plans for them. Once I've got them cleaned enough to kind of work on them, then I'm gonna clean one side of the glass. And here I'm gonna be using Rust-Oleum paint and one of our great stencils from Redesign with Prima. I love their big stencils. You've seen me use these on a lot of different projects. I will have a link for all the products I'm using in the description below, including the colors, so don't worry at trying to write down or keep track of these. I'm using the lids to help keep the off spray going onto the other sections of the window before I am ready for it. And you can see these are not going to set all the way down. This is going to be a little bit of a blurry stencil and I'm perfectly fine with that. This is going to be a boho look and I don't necessarily even want it to be super crisp. I don't want it to be messy, but as you can see, it you can still see the stencil clearly. It's just not purely defined. One of my favorite things about these stencils is the way that they're made, they're very easy to continue a pattern. So whether you're working on furniture or windows or walls, you can actually continue this and have it as a pattern going as high or as wide as you need for any project. After I've painted my stencil, I'm going in with some Krylon frosted glass and I'm gonna use this very sparingly, but again, I don't want this to be super crisp. So I want there to be some fogginess and haziness about it. So I'm just doing a quick coat. And then I'm going in with Krylon's mirror glass. And this is where we're gonna start getting more of that faux mercury glass, antique glass look. And I'm gonna spray it pretty heartily. Now, a little bit of a mistake that I made on the first panel was because I was doing this out in the sunshine, I should have gone in smaller sections, which I'll do on the next part. I'm using alcohol wipes to dab back. I also like to keep alcohol in a spray bottle or a mister bottle and put it on there to create bigger uh, droplet voids. But for some reason, that bottle was actually at the warehouse and not at home. So I just went with the wipes. I do think it's better when you have the droplets, but I think this piece still came out really pretty even without having the droplets on it. You wanna kind of puddle this in some areas just so that you have something to lift up almost, especially, again, I'm in Florida, so I'm working in the sunshine. And then I'm using another layer to sort of haze over even some of the parts where I sort of pounced and pulled up some of the paint. This is a very layered look, and that's my goal, is to constantly layer out the different sections. Now that I've done my mercury glass and once again I've dabbed, I'm gonna add some metallic gold. And this is gonna do two things. One, in the when you're peeking through mercury glass, there always needs to be something behind it that is a little bit darker because it's what helps actually give it the reflective quality. And two, you're gonna see where we've pounced some of that off, it's gonna have another opportunity to layer another metallic in there. Gold is very popular right now, as is copper, and so I'm choosing this opportunity to sort of work with the bronze that we already had and make it really a showpiece. Now I've gone on the other side, because remember I didn't do this originally, is I'm actually taking a paint scraper and I am cleaning the front of the glass really well. Now I didn't worry about paint that had oversprayed from that actually was original to the glass from when it was taken out of the house on the back because to me that was part of the look of the window. 
but I wanna be sure because I'm adding transfers now, and this is a Dixie Belle transfer. This is Leo Noel's design, and it is called Flower Child. I love it. This is the first time I've used this particular one. I know it will be a popular one for me. I love the pattern and the boldness of these colors. Very boho and very beautiful. This is gonna do really well at some of our events. So with the window being super, super clean, I am laying out my transfers. You can just see, I'm trying to figure out how I want this. This actually has a very clear design in it. And so I'm really gonna use the paper almost as it comes out. I'm just cutting it apart, one, to make it easier to transfer, and two, just make it easier for the spacing for me because my spacing may not be exactly the same. Now that I've cut off that little edge and you can kind of see we do not have the frame or the glazing around the inside of the front of this window. So that's a problem we will have to overcome shortly. In the meantime, I am just sort of lining up my edge with that edge and rubbing it down. And then I'm gonna go to town with this stick, just sort of cleaning up the whole thing, making sure it sticks to the window all the way. Now I will tell you, this sticks to the clean window very, very easily. There actually was a point when one of the transfers went down before I wanted it to, and so it's not perfectly straight. I don't think you can really tell too much. It was in almost exactly the right place, and hopefully I recovered that. But know that you need to be careful when you're working with these transfers on glass. They will 100% cling and once they are down, you cannot pick them up without ruining the transfer. So if you're working on something as adhesive easy as glass, be sure you are ready for it to go down before you let it touch the glass. I had several different thoughts as to how I could finish this edge where the glazing and the trim was missing. In the end, I decided on using this braided rope that I have for doing some wreaths, and I had a, a couple spools of it. I only ended up needing one spool of it, but I thought this really lent itself well to the boho look. And I want you to pay attention to the fact that on this also, I'm using the frame, the, I ended up making the front side actually the side that had the least amount of paint on it. This was the, um, this was one of the super chippy ones. And I decided, again, I liked the raw look versus the painted side to be my front side. Once I got all of my braiding done, I'm just going to go in with some DIY clear wax and nourish this old wood Doing this will really help preserve the piece and bring the wood to life a little more. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video, please be sure to hit like and subscribe and share the page. It really helps us get new followers. So this is the finished product of our first window. Tell me what you think about it. Do you like the layered look of the glass with the stencil and the transfers? Is it too much? Have you ever seen vintage windows done this boho style? Uh, leave your comments below. And can you believe that it is already mid-April and June is just around the corner? So I want to take this moment to remind you of creativecon.live. It is a live event that we are doing here in Jacksonville, Florida that is going to be a creative business convention. We are gonna teach you how to build your business with some amazing speakers. It's something that you don't wanna miss. So go to creativecon.live, check out the event, check out the speakers, check out the subjects, and then book your ticket there because you won't wanna miss out on this. Moving on to our next project, this is gonna be very similar. We've already cleaned the glass. We are gonna this time start with the alcohol wipes in hand and we are gonna start by adding some frosted and then mirror glass. And we are dabbing it. I do on this one really want to see more coming through. So we didn't do the stencil and I'm definitely puddling the glass a little bit more. I want, I absolutely need details here that are gonna come through. I really wish I had my alcohol mister bottle and I could have the little splashes, but I didn't, so I'm improvising. And now I'm going in with the gold. I did not put as much mirror glass down before adding the gold because I did want that layered effect. And I'm definitely having parts that you can see all the way through and it's not just hazy, but I do want that layered look. So I'm just gonna let you watch for a second and see my technique. Thank you. 
Once that has completely dried, I'm gonna use some DIY liquid patina and start coating the entire exterior of this window because this was the chippiest of all of the windows and that is likely lead-based paint. I wanna ensure that no more chipping happens when my customers have it. I want to give them the chippy look. I want them to see that authentic vintage paint on there, but I don't want it to be a hazard for anyone. So I'm gonna liberally coat uh, two to three coats of liquid patina and that's gonna ensure no future chipping. Now, once again, I am gonna break out my liquid patina for this next step, and I'm gonna liberally coat this window. Now, normally I would tell you when you are working on something like these windows where you could contaminate the jar, don't dip in, pour some out, but I'm down to the last of my jar. It won't be worth anything after um, I get this project done anyway, so I'm just working inside my jar. But normally you would definitely wanna work outside of your jar in and pour it out of the jar. Don't be dipping your brush and contaminating the rest of your jar. I am using Prima's Mulberry Paper Decoupage Paper. This is heavy duty. It feels actually a little bit more like a fabric. You can kind of see it in the wind at the lower part of your screen blowing. It is a very windy day. So this was not the best day to be doing spray paint and such outside, but it was a beautiful day. And so I did get to enjoy that. I am coating the window and then pushing my paper. I'm trying to push all the bubbles out and push them out to the outside. And then I'm also gonna coat the, so I'm gonna coat under the paper and then I'm gonna coat over the paper. So the paper is like a jelly sandwich and the um, liquid patina is the bread. The mulberry paper is the jelly in the middle of the two sandwich parts, okay? So that's how you wanna think about it. And I am gonna do all five of these window panes and then let it all dry. Once everything has completely dried, I am just gonna use a straight edge. In this case, I have a, a box cutter and I'm gonna go along that edge of the seam and I'm just gonna cut and then it will just pull right out. It's so easy to cut this paper. It's really wonderful. You can see it just pulls right up. Just like on my other window, I had the same issue that I can see the wood on the other side where this doesn't have the molding on it. And even worse on this one, you could see actually a UPC code through it. I thought of a lot of different solutions and then I thought, I'm gonna go make a frame with my Glowforge because ultimately that's what I would want. And this is so easy and so fun. It did take about seven minutes for each frame to cut, but it was fun and it was easy. And honestly, it was a lot better than getting trim work first off and then going and making a whole bunch of miter cuts so that, that I could make the frames perfect. I enjoy showing you the process of how the Glowforge cuts because honestly, I'm just mesmerized by it. I literally could just stand there and watch it cut. And I'll tell you, I pretty much do that all the time when I am using this. I am now using it probably about four or five hours a day. I'm really having fun engraving with it and just coming up with fun ideas. I'm using it to market my other business. And then I've already sold a whole bunch of shark coochie boards. Uh, I showed these on a video and ha, they went crazy. It is just seriously fun just to sit back and watch it do its thing. Once all my frames were done, then I went ahead and used DIY's liquid patina in dark and decrepit and basically stained. I didn't wipe on and wipe off. I just painted this on like a normal paint and it comes out a beautiful rich dark brown which went perfectly with my windows. As you can see, it cleaned up that edge very nicely and, and now each of my windows are perfectly framed. I added D-rings on the side of these for hanging. This window has a beautiful rustic mercury glass finish, just as rustic as the piece itself. It does have a fun feature that while it is beautiful mercury glass when it is leaning up against a wall or hanging on a wall, it also has a fun effect of when you hang it in light or in front of a window, you can see the decoupage paper through the mercury glass. You can still see the bright shine and the reflection of the glass, but you see that beautiful mulberry paper underneath a showstopper for sure. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this piece. It is different, but I love the way it came out. Let me know what you think about it. Would you hang it on a wall or in front of a window to show the paper?